Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Todd. We're back on the front porch today. Yeah, it's been a busy weekend. I'm gonna try to relax here the rest of this afternoon, get another review done. Um, then I'm gonna throw some burgers on the grill, nothing special. Just good old fashioned, you know, hamburgers and whatnot. But <clears throat> just to keep the ball rolling in the right direction, let's see what we have on tap today. Oh man, my shirt's from rolled up. Um, this is the Mississippi Fire Ant from Southern Prohibition Brewing. They're located in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. That's about two hours from me uh, to the northwest. If I jump on Highway 98, which is right over here from my house, I can be there in just a couple of hours. I haven't been to Hattiesburg in forever. It is also the home of the University of Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles. Uh, pretty solid little, I think it's Conference USA football program. I forget my, uh, could be, I don't know. It's a small football program, anywho. Um, this is an, did I say it was an Imperial Red? If I didn't, it is. And it comes in at 8% on the dot. We are going to enjoy this beverage and one of my new vintage tab glasses. Now, granted, that this that, that is not proper uh, beer drinking glassware, but you know what? Don't care. Um, I'm usually a stickler for that sort of thing, but <clears throat> you know, uh, on one of my trips up to visit my son in Las Vegas. Uh, he was showing us around the arts district and whatnot, and we went in a bar that also sells, you know, vintage stuff, antiques, and other little tchotchkes and, you know, zoom zooms and wham whams and things. And I found a pair of these in there. They were they were pretty cheap. Uh, thought, you know what? That's fun. I, I'm a sucker for, you know, any sort of glassware like that. I, the I have to shed uh, shaker pints by the dozen sometimes because I'm constantly at any sort of it's event that, you know, uh, you know, keep your pint night and whatnot at breweries. I'm a sucker for that crap. Uh, but anyway, here's a better look at it. But I'll tell you what, when you're pouring and you get into the waistline right you uh, got to slow down or it, it just foam just erupts. It, it uh, Learn that the hard way. Um, but you can see this is a really dark red. I mean, it's borderline on, on brown ale color. I've seen browns almost, you know, th th this color that were lightening up just a little and got really close to this. We'll see what we got going on. You know, on the nose... You know, it's not a lot happening. It uh, it almost smells it, it almost smells a little bit lagery, you know, which I know it's not. It's a red ale. Um, now, my buddy Jamie McHugh over in Louisiana, he gave me this one, and I know I got at least one more in there that he gave me on my recent trip over there, hanging out with some friends. I, if you look on my shorts, uh, that's a <laughs> You look on the shorts on the channel um there's some crawfish boil stuff he they were it, the, that was a lot of friends of mine over there for that and they all they they watched the channel here and there and so they had whatever little beer that they were drinking they were throwing it in my cooler so i got a bunch of these things to go through you're going to hear me say that a lot over the next several reviews but he threw this one in there i was really interested in it because i, I generally love red ales anyway so let's see what we got going on Wow, up front, right at the front, that thing is rich. I mean, it is rich and malty uh, and really bready and yeasty. It, uh, I mean, it's got that, that yeasty twang. It's, it's really good. Now, it does have uh, a really uh, heavy... 
I really shouldn't use the term heavy because it's not heavy. But it's pretty hoppy on the finish, on the background. And I I, I briefly went, <clears throat> went to the Southern Prohibition website to get some info on it. And they got nice pictures and everything, but it wasn't... They didn't break down the you know the hops bill and the mash bill and, and that sort of thing on there, but it's piney and rosiny like a Cascade. Don't quote me on that. I love the way uh, that Amazon and their uh, the power of Amazon has U.S. Postal Service running on Sundays. <laughs> but anywho, let's get back to this beer. Yeah, that's really good. Jesus. Holy mackerel. The, the upside to all of that, <clears throat> I, I, I'm, I'm overusing the term all of that. The bitterness on the back end of that is it, it helps to cut through. Uh, uh, that's a lot of malt in that, in there up on the, on the front. But I, this is really good. I, I, could, I could drink a lot of it, but there's in the, therein lies the conundrum. It is an eight percenter, so you know it's kind of proceed with caution. You know when you crack the lid on that third or fourth or beyond, you know know your limits, or at least make sure you know where you are and how you're going to get back to where you need to be. Um, hmm, I, this isn't going to last long, and it's the only one I got. That's the sad part. Oh, that's just super. I'd like to, I wish I had a few so I could see how they, how they sit. You know, if you wanted to do three or four. I know at 8% I can't just sit down and belly off in them, you know, for, for very long. But <clears throat> that's really, you know, it's borderline IPA bittering and it. It's really close. But it's all on the finish, so, you know, it's not that total hoppy onslaught. It, it's just a little bit of a bite at the end. It's, it's pretty good. And for those of you that don't know, uh, the fire ant, uh, which we have an abundance of here in the Deep South, uh, it's one of the few uh, pain in the ass invasive creatures that did not originate from our friends in Florida. It came in through the port of Mobile on a banana boat is the suspicion back in the 30s so you know we've had them here for freaking decades uh won't be long be a hundred years you know we live with them uh it's not like you they sneak up I mean the mounds are enormous they stick up out of the yard and you go out there and put some sort of you know horrible chemical on them to kill them but the kicker with them is they have this nifty trick they like to pull on you when you do get in a, a fire ant mound. If you're not paying any attention and you linger that foot close to one or one that's not gotten itself built up, you know, two feet up out of the ground yet, you know, they all run up your leg and you, you don't really notice it. And they have this magic ability to communicate chemically from what I understand. And everybody bites at once. You know, it's like they're all, all right, wait, and I wait till everybody's here, you know, and then pow. You get you get a couple of dozen. You know you're not if you get bit by a fi one rogue fire ant, you consider yourself lucky. Uh, now it's not quite as bad as a bee sting, not far from it, but they do uh, whelp up pretty good and fester a little bit. You know there's always that fun to deal with, and they she's man they ling for linger for days after that. Uh, but you know if you just pay attention, they're not really a, that big of an issue. So now that we've had our entomology lessons for today, um, we'll get back to the beer for just one second before we wrap this thing up. Yeah, this just, man, this thing would be perfect. You know what? I'm not, I, I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not, don't touch it. As I acclimate <clears throat> my palate a little bit acclimates to that hoppiness. This thing's just great. 
Um, so, and I've not had a lot of luck with much from Southern Prohibition until this one. So, good work, guys. So let's wrap this thing up. I've, I've rambled on, you know, way too long for a beer review now. Uh, so, like and subscribe. How, wherever those little things pop up, shoot me a comment and um, please enjoy your adult malted beverages responsibly.